though most serial killers start during their adult years, that's not to say there aren't some really sick and twisted kids out there. Though you'd never expect it, some children are just as capable of killing as full-fledged adults. From the horrifying acts of Big Ed to an eight-year-old killer who murdered for fun, here are three of the youngest serial killers ever. Edmund Kemper Born on December 18, 1948 in Burbank, California, Edmund Kemper presented troubling behaviors from an early age. A future serial killer also had a tumultuous childhood. His mother, Carnell Elizabeth Kemper, was an alcoholic. Her erratic behavior once led Kemper's father, a World War II veteran named Edmund Emil, to remark, Missions in wartime and the later atomic bomb testings were nothing compared to living with Clarnell. Ed's mother refused to coddle her son for fear it would turn him gay. In that turbulent environment, Kemper began to develop dark fantasies early on. Fueled by these thoughts, he started decapitating his sister's dolls. In addition, Kemper forced his sisters to play disturbing games like electric chair and gas chamber. As if imagining where he might end up, Kemper had his sisters pretend to march him to his death. At the age of 10, Kemper's disturbing behaviors escalated to violence. After his father left the family in 1957, the young boy killed both of the family's cats. He even buried one of the cats alive and later decapitated it. Meanwhile, without Edmund Sr. around, Kemper's mother began to focus her aggression on her teenage son. She made him sleep in the basement, claiming that he might hurt his sisters, as she regularly berated and insulted him, telling him that no woman would ever fall in love with him. At 15, Kemper's murderous rage against women ignited into a blaze of violence. Kemper sh his grandmother three times in the head and back as she sat at the kitchen table just because the grandparents confiscated the rifle. When Edmund Kemper Sr. came home from grocery shopping, Kemper sh him in the driveway. After being taken into custody, he allegedly told police, I just wanted to see how it felt to shoot grandma. Despite the heinous act, Kemper was sentenced to a state hospital and then released into his mother's care on his 21st birthday. Kemper tried to have a normal life before, but it didn't work for him. As he drove around California, Kemper noticed lots of women hitchhiking, so he started giving them rides. By 1972, Kemper had turned to a life of violence yet again. He stabbed and choked two women to death. The police even stopped him on his way back home while the dead bodies were still in the trunk. Fortunately for Kemper, the cops didn't search the vehicle. Once home, Kemper simply abused the bodies. He then dismembered them, placing the body parts into plastic bags and disposed of them. He would do the same with four more girls and even buried a severed head from one of his victims in his mother's garden and left it facing toward her bedroom. According to him, he did this because his mother always wanted people to look up at her. From the very start, Kemper's real target was his mother. And on April 20th, 1973, he finally fulfilled his dream. He bludgeoned his mother to death with a claw hammer while she was sleeping. He then decapitated her head and sexually abused it. He also screamed at the head for an hour straight. He then invited his mother's best friend, Sally Hallett, over and murdered her too. After the heinous crimes, Kemper confessed to everything. At first, the police didn't believe that Big Ed could be a killer, but Kemper soon began to describe things that only the co-ed killer could know. Kemper was arrested and later convicted of eight counts of first-degree murder. Kemper attempted suicide twice and even requested the death penalty, but was ultimately given seven consecutive life sentences instead. As chronicled in season one of Netflix's crime show Mindhunter, Edmund Kemper's testimony about his state of mind during his murders was integral to law enforcement's understanding of how serial killers operate. Harvey Miguel Robinson Currently one of the youngest serial killers on death row, Harvey Miguel Robinson was only 17 years old. He committed such heinous crimes that include attacking five women and killing three. Police arrested Robinson for the first time when he was only nine years old. In school, he showed signs of severe conduct disorder, and teachers quickly noted Robinson's inability to tell right from wrong and his severe distaste for authority. Robinson grew up with a strong admiration for his father, a Pottstown jazz musician who in 1963 was convicted of a brutal murder of his mistress. 
He had beaten the victim so badly that she was nearly unrecognizable. Thirty years later, Harvey Robinson would begin down the dark path of his father. In 1993, Robinson spotted his first victim, Joan Burghardt, undressing before bed in her apartment window. After a neighbor called police to complain about Burghardt leaving her stereo on for three days and three nights, police discovered the 29-year-old's body, sexually assaulted and brutally murdered. Police noted that her bedroom screen window was also missing. His next victim was 15-year-old newspaper carrier Charlotte Schmoyer. An autopsy report showed that she had been stabbed at least 22 times and sexually abused repeatedly, with her throat slashed in obvious overkill. Harvey Robinson's gruesome teenage murder streak didn't end there. His third victim was a 47-year-old grandmother, Jessica Jean Fortney, who he sexually assaulted before strangling to death the month after killing Schmoyer. His fourth victim was Denise Callie. Robinson sexually abused and choked her and left her to die, but fortunately she survived. When he went back to finish off the job, an officer was there to meet him. While courts often give juvenile defenders much more lenient sentences, the grisly nature, repetition, and speed of his crimes led Robinson to receive three consecutive life sentences and more than 100 years in prison. Armajit Sada Thousands of serial killers and murderers shocked the world with their murders and kidnapping activities. But during 2007, the world saw a new face of a serial killer who made everyone shocked and hurt. An investigation team in Bihar studied a bizarre case of an eight-year-old boy who allegedly killed four under-a-year-old children. Yes, you heard that right. Amarjit Sada is one of the youngest serial killers to be found so far. At the age when children fly kites, read comics, and watch cartoons on TV screens, he was on a killing spree. Born in Bihar, India, the child experienced a childhood much like other children around him. However, none of the people around him knew that he would grow up to commit heinous crimes. Considering that the family was poor, abuse must have taken place that led to the nurturing of Armajit's psychopathic and sadistic tendencies. Armajit was just eight years old when he first fed his lust for taking a human life and his desire to inflict pain on others. He chose to prey on children, and his first victim was only eight months old. What makes this even more chilling is that it wasn't just a random child. The eight-month-old child was Armajit's own sister. Shortly after the murder of his sister, Armajit struck again, murdering another infant who was six months old. This victim happened to be his own cousin. Armajit seemed to find joy in picking out victims that he had easy access to and would strangle them to death. What is more horrific is that the families and the villagers knew about the murders that Armajit had been committing but chose to remain silent, deeming them as internal familial issues. They didn't realize that soon, Armajit's killing spree would show life outside of his family as well. In 2007, Chan Chan Devi, the mother of a six-month-old girl, left her at school daycare to tend to her chores for the day. When she returned, she found that her child was missing. After the news spread, people started to fear for the worst, and knowing about Armajit's past and his easy access to Kushbu, they confronted him. After being questioned, Armajit showed no remorse and gleefully told the villagers about how he strangled the child to death and led them to the shallow grave where she was buried. Excitedly, he told them, I killed her by beating her from a brick. He told them that he quickly covered her with debris and grass, and then left for his house after she was dead. After confessing, Armajit was arrested for the murder of Kushbo Devi. Unfortunately, as the family covered up the murders of his first two victims, he was never found guilty for their murders. Despite this, he was called into questioning and asked about how he attacked his victims and why he did so. His response would send chills down anyone's spine. Armajit Sada looked at the police and smiled, and simply asked for more biscuits to be provided to him. He did not show any remorse, and whenever nudged into the direction of his heinous acts, he would stop talking and just smile. It's clear that Armajit had no sense of what was right or wrong. In 2016, Armajit Sada was released on his 18th birthday. Currently, he is 22 years old, but after his release, nobody knows where he went or where he is. Maybe after his release from the sentence, he is spending an everyday life somewhere in India or another country. 
but there is also the possibility that perhaps he continues with his crimes again, like before. What do you think he's doing now? Do you think child killers should be given a more severe punishment for such crimes? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our channel for your regular dose of whodunits. See you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, stay warm, and don't get any crazy ideas.